Hello, in the last through, uh, few videos, we've been doing things the hard way in terms of coming up with the principal component analysis of a data set. Um, in this uh, video, I'm going to be talking about how we can use scikit-learn to accomplish the same thing uh, much more simply. And honestly, this is probably the way you'll be doing it the vast majority of the time. All the stuff prior is to just give you a sense of what's happening um, inside of that library. So I have the same data set as before, where I have the, the rectangle dimensions, and um, I can see how we started setting up the problem last time. Uh, we would compute the covariance matrix, and then we would decompose that matrix into the product of these three parts. Um, these parts told us a couple things. Uh, one, the uh, eigenvalues told us how much, um, how much variance can be captured along you know, one, two, or maybe some other subset of the dimensions. And then we had the eigenvectors, which actually helped us compress uh, either the covariance matrix or probably more importantly um, the original data set and in the original one we looked at the um, eigen eigenvalues we looked at the cumulative sum of them divided by the total and so we could see that even just one uh, dimension to the data uh, gives us almost two-thirds of the variance and then two captures basically everything um, which is trying towards our expert expectations and then you know rapidly diminishing returns after that so when we're going to be doing this in uh, scikit-learn, it turns out that I don't need any of these things. So I'm going to be deleting it. Um, uh, I'm going to do some imports here. Uh, so uh, I can say from, uh, well, first off, let me import some of the things we've done before. So I can say from linear uh, models, uh, from linear, I'm sorry, from sklearn.linear model, import linear regression. Um, other things we've seen before are um, polynomial features. I just want to put all the imports here so I can compare some of these so from sklearn uh, dot preprocessing uh, import polynomial features uh, Excel. And uh, then the new one we're learning right now is from sklearn uh, decomposition. So remember, decomposition is another word um, for factoring things. Um, I want to import ECA, right? So I'm going to do that. I have these three th 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 things. And just to have a quick review of what these are, are doing for. We're trying to, you know, fit some uh, predicted variable uh, to explanatory variables. And um, then these other ones, when I'm doing polynomial features, what I'm trying to do there is I'm add uh, features to capture uh, non-linear friends. And then, so here I was adding features, or another word for features is columns in this case. Here I want to uh, remove, or I guess kind of reduce uh, features slash columns to uh, kind of remove uh, redundancy, right? Maybe there's a covariance between certain columns, right? Maybe I can kind of capture that and uh, and maybe compress all the data into fewer dimensions. And so it's very common that depending on what you're trying to do, they might you might add columns with this, you might remove columns with this. Um, sometimes people will do both of them. You'll add some polynomial features and then kind of strip things down. And, and you might do these steps uh, before you do a linear regression or some other machine learning model, okay? And so how are we gonna do this now? It's actually very similar to use a, a PCA as polynomial features. And so maybe I'll start with polynomial features since we've done it before in way of review and then show you how we can tweak the code to get a PCA working. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say uh, polynomial features, maybe poly, I have a new object there. And um, inside of here I can say, well, what degree do I want? So maybe I want uh, second degree. And, um, and then I can uh, do a fit transform of this data, right? So some of these things in sklearn are transforming uh, data for purposes of kind of feeding into another system. Both of these are like that. I'm gonna fit transform uh, my original data, which is df. If I run that, I get this um, array. And so maybe I'm just gonna capture that in a variable. And, um, and let's just try to see what that looks like. I'm going to say PD dot data frame. I want to look at A, and I'll just do that for starters. 
And what are these column names? Well, those are R and this. I can say get feature names, I think it is. And uh, that must have not been it. Here, let me just check my notes here um, for a moment. Um, that not, is that not right? Let me just check what's going on here. Oh, the shapes must not quite be be right. Oh, and you know what it is, is I meant to say columns equals. There we go. Okay. And um, I'm sorry, I need to pass in here too what the original columns were. So that was from dataframe.columns. I'm um, sorry for the confusion. Okay, so I get this much larger um, uh, data set, right, where I have all the original variables like so. I um, am doing a second degree polynomials. So that means I'm going to do things like um, squaring various features. And uh, when I'm doing a second degree, that might also mean that I multiply one column by another. And that's what this column is. Uh, this is the multiplication of the width uh, by the height, right? Even though they're not really explicitly showing that. Okay, so here's an example with the polynomial features. And then I might feed this data into something else, like a, like a regression, um, if I wanted to. Okay, so let's see how we're going to do this now, not with polynomial features, but this other transformer, uh, which is uh, PCA. I'm going to paste this down here. Um, instead of polynomial features, I'm going to create a PCA. I'll just make this called PCA like so. And here, I, I hit Shift Tab inside of here to kind of see what my options are. Uh, I can specify how many components there are. And I remember from last time that two components captured most of what I wanted, right? So now I need to say PCA.fit transform. And um, this is gonna, I have to think about this part a little bit, but let me just, uh, I'm gonna get rid of this for now. This columns equals, actually, let me just do this. I'm just gonna hard code it for now. And then we'll talk about how to make it more general. So principal component uh, one, and principal component two. I'm going to do that, and I can see that I can reduce down that original data, just these two um, new features that kind of capture all the all the original information. Okay, now uh, maybe if I wanted to, I could say, hey, I want to have three of these things, and now it's trying to complain because, well, uh, it's kind of expecting that I should have three columns, right, since I passed in this columns thing. So, so what I'm actually going to do is this. I'm going to say, Something like this. I'm going to say uh, PC plus stir of i plus 1 for i in range of 3. Does that work? I guess that works, but instead of 3, I should really um, uh, figure out how many there are, right? So I should say PCA dot uh, n. Let me, let me just check my notes here. I think it's n components. Yeah, n uh, components with an underscore, so I run that. And now I can set this for as many as I want, right? I could have compressed down to four, uh, five. I can't do six, right? Because I didn't have that many columns in my original data set, right? Now, last time we learned that there were two, and those two captured 99% uh, percent of the variance. Most of that variance was happening in our first uh, principal component. Um, so I could do something like this if I wanted to. If I want to, um, kind of instead of saying up front how many should be here, I can put a fraction, right? And what this means is uh, give me however many principal components are necessary to get 50% of the variance, right? So I could do that, and, and that gives me one column. If I want uh, 99, let's say about 90% of the variance, uh, that gives me just two. 99 would also give me two, right? Because after those first two, um, you know, we get the vast majority of the variance. Okay, so you can see that this one, polynomial features, adding columns, uh, principal component analysis, giving me new features, but, uh, but fewer of them. Okay, so last time, one of the things that we did is we showed that we can actually go from uh, our reduced data set uh, back to the original, right? So uh, maybe I'll just call this PC, uh, data frame, and um, let me just see that PC data frame principal components data frame, and let me just look at the maybe first few rows. Um, it turns out that I can use this PCA object to go 
uh, backwards as well. Right, so fit transform, I can do an inverse uh, transform. And, um, and here I just need to pass in that data, right? So I can pass in that. And let me, let me just see if that looks correct, right? So I have this big matrix. In my original data, I had something like this. I can see it is indeed recovering it, right? So this is much nicer than um, it was when I was doing things manually because before I had to do things like, um, you know, subtract off the mean on my uh, data set and then add it back later it's taking care of all of that for me now right so um so i can do this i can say original equals that and if i wanted to i could create a data frame from it back from my original data and and, and of course when i'm reproducing the original right i should have um i should have the same columns here as i had originally right so i'm going to say df columns and I can see that this is pretty similar data, right? Where we're kind of reproducing it. Um, we lost a tiny bit of information, right? Because we only have two of the of the principal components here, right? If I said something like this, right, and ran this again, now you see it's giving me all columns to get to that much of the variance. And then these things are exactly the same, right? Right, but I can kind of set these thresholds, right? It's probably makes sense to uh, say, hey, I just want ninety nine percent of the variance. And then we get some pretty similar um, data in the end, right? And then um, at this point, right, since I've kind of shown that this smaller table here, right, I've shown that this has all the information in it. Of course it does, right? Because I can reproduce um, the original from that if I want. Uh, people often do a linear regression on this or other kinds of machine uh, learning.